It's June 24th and it's time for Watcher Weekly. Welcome to Watcher Weekly, a show where we kick back, chat, and answer your guys' questions to the best of our uh, uh, ability. My foot hurts because it's being pressed against the ground. It's a floor episode, folks. It's uh, That's The right. day has come. It's the floor episode. We're on the floor, all three of us, flooring, flooring, flooring. If you'd like to um, submit anything for Watcher Weekly, swing on by. We are Watcher. We are Watcher. We are Watcher. Patreon.com slash Watcher. YouTube.com slash Watcher. Uh, uh. Good to be on the floor. Steven, now I'm seeing the appeal of it. You've been on the floor for, for weeks now. I've been floor gang for life. Floor life. <laughs> I am sitting on a little rug that's typically occupied by my cat. I'm not sitting on a rug at all. That's a pretty smart idea. I should be sitting on a pillow or something. You're on the hardwood? Yeah. I'm sitting on this guy right here. See this? Oh, for a second yeah. I thought you were gonna say you were sitting on your cat. <laughs> Initially, I no. thought about maybe <sighs> laying down on the floor and having my camera overhead, but that's, it was too difficult to figure the logistics of that out. Also weirdly sensual. Yeah, I don't want you to feel that's like you're weird. a ghost floating above me. Um, should be noted, uh, pr pr first and foremost, Ryan, welcome back. What are you talking about? Oh. Is this a, sort of a fugue state situation you don't remember? <laughs> no, it was all a bit. I tricked all of you. It was all I was making it up. <laughs> um, some notes. Some notes. Okay. Right. Yeah, very good. Very good. As ARGs go, a little sloppy. What now? I said as ARGs go, it was a little sloppy. Well, you know, uh, sometimes art is a little bit sloppy, and dare I say, uh, dangerous. I don't think it was dangerous. Do you think it was dangerous? I will say that the videos will point to certain things in maybe upcoming episodes. One of them was purposely there just to distract people, so. Hmm. I see, yeah, very good. A nice little dip in the ARG waters. I wouldn't even call it ARG. Yeah, we didn't really build it out in that way. It was more um, just to confuse people and get them talking, you know? I mean, I guess if people are trying to figure out clues from it as to what the upcoming episode's about. Sure, I guess you could call that a game. Yeah. If you missed it, there's an episode of a new show that we have out on Watcher. It's called Are You Scared? It's a show where I tell the internet's spookiest, scariest stories to Shane over there. And those stories may or may not be true. And uh, there's going to be two more episodes for a grand total of three. So it's a little mini pilot season. So remind me, what, what went on in the uh, casting decision? I remember putting in my application, doing a little uh, those live yeah. reads. You submitted and, a self tape. Uh, self tape. I never got a, a phone call back though. I don't know if I ever saw the tape. I did see some of the paperwork. I skimmed it. I think we ended up with the right the right people. I appreciate that, Ryan. I appreciate that. You may not believe in me, but uh, somebody will someday. No, I'm and... sure. I'm sure they'll skim it too. The, uh, they're very fun to shoot because we do them actually at night in front of our computers in a way that uh, feels very faithful to the setup that the show is presenting. The show was inspired know. by that. It was inspired by me reading creepy pastas in the No Sleep Forum in my bed at night because I am a masochist. <laughs> You're a sicko. I'm a weird dude. <laughs> You're not right in the head. I'm a strange guy. <laughs> I got a lot of crows. There's in something wrong with me. <laughs> huh? Yeah. You're cracked, dude. Your brain There's is a crack cracked. in my brain. <laughs> Uh, by the way, it is a very good show, and I want to give a big shout out to not the host of the show, but the real heroes who are the editors. That is true. Big shout out to Anthony Frederick and Steven Castro. Uh, we shot this show like a month ago and really slammed on it to get this done and into a place where we were all happy with it. And also a huge shout out to Katie LeBlanc was integral in the creation process and um, really just helped guide the ship as well. I just realized something, by the way, I called you a weirdo for, for going through with the bit, but I suppose Shane and I did also follow along with it, so. We nailed it. Steven, marvelous job acting. Thank you. I don't know if it's necessarily the caliber of acting that is demanded for something like Are You Scared? But uh, one thing you have to remember is that Ryan and I are classically trained actors. And when I say Ryan and I, referring to me and my good friend, Brian Cramblish. Uh, he's talking about Brad and Brian. Yes. We should probably move on to questions, but before we do, we've got a friendly sponsor this week. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Take us to the ocean. It's just really we fun. Ryan, Ryan, rainy. can you get in on this? Yeah, I, it's I, really oh, yeah. fun. Oh God, now I'm gonna have to use core to stay up. Uh, I like this, whoa. <laughs> it's nautical. Of course, I gotta put on my uh, Mr. Krabs. 
Mr. Krabs. Before we get into it, I want to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. In the ocean of online content, there's a lot of websites and little crabs that take your info without you knowing it. But you can swim under the radar using Surfshark VPN or Virtual Private Network. You can stop websites from tracking your info and selling targeted ads to you. I'm like, I'm really enjoying the nautical theme, so I'm gonna go with a Quint from Jaws approach here. And uh, please allow, I, I don't, I can't guarantee it's good, but I, I'm gonna try my best. Oh, you know, nothing's creepier than when you have a conversation with a crustacean about something and it pops up in your ads. Oh, Surfshark's hacklock ID system, you get a little notification when some little jerk manta ray is trying to break into your email account. <laughs> but one of the best things about Surfshark and my personal favorite is that you can see content that's not available in your area. You'll know what that means when you log into Netflix and suddenly see a bunch of Canadian things in there. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Jaws isn't available in your area, but with Surfshark, maybe it is black eyes like a doll's eyes. <laughs> So, if you want both protection and freedom online, use our code below, it's Watcher, to save up to 80% off. 85, it's 85. Black eyes like a dollar sign. It's an extra 5% limb. You say that again and I'll throw you overboard. You get it? So if you want both protection and freedom online, use our code WATCHER, it's in the description below, and it'll give you 85% off plus three months free of service. That's right. Surfshark also offers a 30-day money-back guarantee so there's no risk for you. Thanks, Surfshark. Are you telling me that if I'm not satisfied after 30 days, they'll give me booty back? They'll give you back all your shining coins. That's incredible. Oh, 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 all my doubloons. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Surfshark. We appreciate it. We do have one quick announcement. It's actually uh, very fun. So special announcement, as Steven said, there's going to be an answer time on our brand spanking new Tumblr at We Are Watcher today, Wednesday the 24th at 12 p.m. Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern. We're gonna be answering all your questions, especially those directed at our new show, Are You Scared? You got any questions for how Ooh. it's made? Got any questions about uh, why Steven wasn't in the show? Pretty easy answer. Uh, you know, <laughs> we can answer those at answer time, because it's answer time. For you, it's question time, but then it will be answer time, because we'll because it, it'll be question time for you, then question time for us. Then we'll take that question time, turn it into an answer time, send it back to you, and it will be an answer time for you. That's how it works. It's exactly how it works. It's like a dating app. We should call it question meets answer. <laughs> yeah. That's not even funny. I don't know why I laughed. This floor episode, by the floor way, is getting episode, very man, uncomfortable. I'm loving it. I'm having a blast over My here. My buns hurt. He's having fun too. First up is from YouTube, this is from SlashyYT. As uh, I think we have mentioned this, but if you would like to submit questions for future episodes, swing by the C tab, or the That's community right. tab as we call it. I thought it was called the C tab. Oh, <laughs> oh. Uh, this is from the C tab, SlashyYT. Yes, is Ryan okay? Uh, I think this is in response to the rich and robust ARG campaign. It could be Crying in response to me, the person. Well, yes, I think they're concerned for your welfare on a, on account of, um, you know. And and to be fair, in that first episode of Watch Your Weekly, um, at the top of it, you were very caffeinated. That is true. And I saw some people who were like, he's having a bad reaction to that caffeine, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's really tripping balls, man. <laughs> yeah, I was very concerned that people would get legitimately concerned. Even when the first episode went up, I was like, people in Discord seem like they're really worried. Maybe we should tell them. And everyone was like, calm down, Shane, shut, shut up. That's true. The bit that Ryan did is not a reflection on Nero, by the way. Nero is great. That caffeine really helped. No, I was just doing a fun little thing, you know. But am I okay? No, I'm never okay. <gasps> His brain is cracked, bro. My brain is porridge. <laughs> He's damaged. I've seen too much. <laughs> M. Sanchez asks, what are you guys releasing new episode commentaries? Um, we haven't done them for every single episode. Oh, um, but Ryan, you, our episode commentaries we've been releasing for the top two tiers of the patrons. Ryan, you have an episode commentary for Are You Scared? Up right now, don't you? You bet your buns I do, big boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what you have to it's weird because certain episodes of certain shows, it's like, well, we've sort of covered everything on this series, but I covered quite a bit of in the first three commentaries, but I might go back and just record one. So maybe I'll add one of those up there too. Uh, next question comes from Crimson. What type of bender would you consider yourself to be? Earth, fire, water, or air? Personally, I'd be a water bender. Good uh, sea naval theme we've got going on here today. I'd go earth 
Uh, they seem like they're very, very chill. I was gonna say very down to earth. Then that would be a dumb pun that I wasn't intending on making. Uh, <laughs> good. Toph's my favorite character in the series. Yeah, I'd go. I'd go Earth. I don't know anything about the series, so I'm just gonna have to go off which element I like the best. I'm gonna go oh, fire, that's... even though I do like to air on the side of caution. <laughs> Ugh, Steven, I, I feel like know. you would be an airbender. Brittany, Brittany is nodding along. Brittany, what do you think you would be? I feel like Brittany would be water or earth. I think, yeah, I think so too. I think maybe water. Yeah. I'm gonna start saying that. Instead of saying, did you fart? I'm gonna ask people, did you just bend air? That's pretty funny. Pretty good. I think it's a pretty overused joke, but Is it? I've fine. never heard anyone do that. I'm an airbender. Okay. All right, next question. Uh, this comes from Cree Long John. What are your favorite board games from Patreon? It's worth saying that we will be answering more of these Patreon questions on our special version of Watch It Weekly called Watch It Weekly Plus over on patreon.com slash watcher. Board games, I'm a basic boy. I. I do love Catan. Is it Catan or Catan? Yeah. Let's settle this right now in the comments. I think most people say Catan. All right, let's find somebody who speaks the English language correctly. Well, yeah. they may be the board game. We may have to consult the board game themselves. Catan is, it deserves credit because I want to say like a decade ago, it, it got a lot of people back into board games and sort of started the board game renaissance. Dang it, it's Catan. Like a third of the way into the game, you get a pretty good idea of who's going to win. And I always just kind of bail. I want to put a legacy pick in there because I did play a lot of of Monopoly growing up. Fun game, oh. always, no matter what. Uh, betrayal on the House on the Hill is a betrayal of... I think it's Betrayal at House on the Hill. I, I do love Betrayal. Go. Ryan, have you ever played Arkham Horror? No, actually I played it for a little bit. Uh, my my roommate and I that. set it up on the table downstairs and our third roommate just cleared it off the next it's... morning. <laughs> It takes like 45 minutes to set everything up. Yeah. That is my favorite game. I also want to play Time Stories. That's a shout out to a game I haven't played yet, but I've heard nothing but good things. Yeah, I'm sitting on so many games. Oh, another great one, Red Dragon Inn. You play a bunch of like fantasy characters uh, who are like done adventuring for the day and you all go back to the tavern. And the whole game is that you like buy drinks for other people and you try to get them to pass out and then steal all their gold. Oh, that Just sounds amazing. It's so fun. And you can pick like different characters to be. You don't have to go like That's one good. for one with the stuff in the game, but it's fun because like sometimes you'll get a drink. You have two little tokens that it's like your fortitude and your blood alcohol content. That's very they, fun. If they meet, then you pass out and lose. By the way, I would love to make a board game one day. That's yeah, me too. Been a dream of mine. Me too. Board game companies, are you listening? For our last question, that will segue into our segment. You wanna do that? Ah, yes. Yeah. Got milk. Uh, what do you guys think about the discovery of Forrest Fenn's treasure? I guess we now know it wasn't you guys who found it. LOL. How dare you? Which brings us to our segment. Do you know that? Do you actually segment. know that though, is the thing. You know it that someone the, uh... has found it. You know that uh, reportedly they're from across the world and they just recently started this hunt maybe but their identity remains unknown. We should at least preface this by saying, if you haven't seen it, there's an episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved where Ryan and I went treasure hunting, looking for Forrest Fenn's treasure, sort of a mm -hmm. very infamous online treasure hunt. He's posted a wonderful poem with clues. For all of you who don't know, Forrest Fenn was a collector of rare antiquities who lives in New Mexico. He hid a treasure chest full of said antiquities at the age of 80 in the Rocky Mountains he narrowed down the location of the treasure to uh, one of four states. I believe it was New Mexico, Utah was one of them, I think. He actually had such a love of the outdoors as a child that he thought, oh, wouldn't it be fun if I got a bunch of adults like myself to go out into the wild and kind of be a kid again and enjoy the outdoors. So that was like the he didn't like, didn't he beat cancer or something? He did, he did, yeah. He came very close to death and beat it. After that, he was like, I wanna do this thing that's gonna have a legacy, so. That is true. How do I know more about this than you do, Ryan? I don't know. <laughs> is Stephen Lim the guy who found it? Ooh. I don't know. At the time when we searched, about over 70,000 people had tried to find it. Now that number is much larger. Shane and I went out and tried to find the location of the treasure by going through three of my solves that I exhaustively researched over the course of three months. Some say we came out empty-handed. Some say. 
some say. Uh-huh. Well, the crazy thing about it is it's obviously a lot of informed solves out there, but in a way, it's it's almost a needle in a haystack situation. We look near Santa Fe. We look near Red River in New Mexico. I forget what the, the, the last one. It's been a while since I've looked at our solves. I guess it didn't really matter. That's Which brings me to my next point, by the way. I have a lot of people at me uh, that, that are adding me on Twitter, and I couldn't <laughs> respond because I was, at the time... Oh, you were in your, your ARG mode. Yeah. A lot of people were saying that they, they found it. Wow, sweet relief. And in fact, it's quite the opposite. I know a lot of people on the forums on chasechat.com also feel this way. They're devastated. They spent years, maybe even decades, moving up their family, uprooting their lives to find this treasure. And at the end of it, all that happens is some, there's a bunch of news articles that say, oh, the treasure has been found. Yet no reveal where the treasure was found. I don't care about somebody finding the treasure. What I want to know is where was the actual chest buried? How close were my solves? Validate the work I had been doing for years, and instead you, 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 you still leave us with the secret. I'm a little uh, peeved by it, quite frankly. Uh, we'll never know. We'll never know where it was. Ryan, this is giving me an idea. Let's say that you and I are wildly successful, and within a decade, we each have a million dollars. Wildly successful. Yeah. <laughs> Just a million dollars. <laughs> Can't wait to where this is gonna go. Instead of buying homes, let's each take <laughs> 500K, put it in a box, and start our own treasure hunt. I don't, I, I guess. <laughs> or, you know, it could just be some little knickknacks. Yeah, it could be, yeah. He, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought he had said like, well, I'm gonna leave it up to, you know, the finder of the treasure to decide, but it's frankly, it's fucking rude. It is a little rude. It's a bit of a sore subject for me. I hope you enjoyed your oh. uh, post-it note of IOU signed <laughs> Ryan and Shane. Uh, <laughs> I feel like it's fake. We're in a very weird time obviously with a lot of things going on in the world. And I think he wanted to kind of instill hope in people by saying that it was found. Well, he certainly did not do that. That shoot was wild though. That was out of all of our shoots, perhaps the most stressed I've ever seen Ryan. Yeah, and much like any anybody who searched for this treasure would know, looked great on Google Maps. And then you get out there and the terrain's insane or you're walking, have to walk through private property. So like every one of my solves ended up not being feasible. And I thought we had flown a crew over to New Mexico to shoot us driving around in a rental car, essentially. And, uh, and I was like, what have I done? <laughs> Fun times. There you go, internet. That's what you wanted to know. You wanted to see our take on the discovery of Forrest Fenn's treasure. Someone lucky enough out there found an empty box. Wait, so this is what I'm wondering. When you guys had that postmortem afterward where you're like pretending to not find it, but you found it, but uh, what? So did you find it or not? I don't know. No, of course not. <laughs> and if you did find it, what did you do with the money? Because Watcher could use some. <laughs> I did. I did see some. I saw some people who were like, "Uh, well, they did found a company shortly thereafter." <laughs> look at the timeline. Very suspicious. Well, that does it for this week's Watcher Weekly. Uh, don't forget, there's a Tumblr question time today over at wearewatcher.tumblr.com. See, check us out yes. over there. Come say hi, uh, and we'll see you next week. Alrighty. Huh? Bye. Bye. Bye.